Those are cute. It's a good day today. Jesse noticed I did my braids different. That makes me sound terrible. But you don't know what they're called. If you knew what they were called, I'd be worried. Yeah, I have no idea. I had idea. to inform Jesse, you don't know how to do this. Oh God, no. So you still have your man card. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the fact that I noticed puts me on the edge of my man card. <laughs> You're like, hey cute. girl, nice braids. Right? Oh, they're cute. These are adorable. Okay, can we go unbox LED lights now? Let's do it. You can redeem yourself. <laughs> So it's kind of hard not to get ridiculously excited because it just yes. keeps snowing and snowing means plowing but I can't plow because I want to put lights on the backhoe. Do you think we should shovel the truck at any point in this winter? Yeah? What do you think though? Should we let it keep climbing or should we shovel it today? Well, I think we should check the snow load rating of the truck. I know, because it's not engineered. Yeah, what's the what's the snow load on that camper shell over there? Is it like six <laughs> feet? It's Alyssa height already. <laughs> I have the urge to pull a baby and sled. <laughs> I know. Except for missing two things. Babies a baby and, sleds. and a sled. <laughs> <laughs> so I so, guess I'll just go for a walk. One of those can be purchased. <laughs> the other has to be made yeah. and they take a while to make. I was going to say, which is which? Yeah, it takes a little while to make them. I mean, you want to make them right, so you want to take your time, Maybe you know? Maybe time for next winter. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe by next winter we can have yeah. a sled. In case you're just joining us, we did recently do an unboxing on similar light pods. Check out that video. We still have a lot of work to do on those lights. We want to do some comparisons and testing. I'm really anxious to get the backhoe, which is what we're doing these lighting upgrades on. I'm anxious to get it kind of outfitted so that I feel like I've kind of got the mounting sorted out. And then I feel better about doing more apples to apples comparison versus just doing them on a bench. Well, it's not real world testing, so I don't feel like it'll really yield much for us. My goal has been simple. I've wanted to upgrade the LED lighting, or excuse me, the lighting on our backhoe from halogen, these old tanks, to something more modern that is lower current draw and produces a lot more light. So this uh, is a little bit about what we're trying to accomplish with the backhoe. Currently, or previously I guess, there was four lights on the front and four lights on the rear. Two of the lights are a flood pattern to give you a good lighting of the work zone around the front and sides. And then two of those were driving lights, meant more for like highway use, but also long range vision. So we've already done a little bit of work on the pods. Today, we want to look at the light bars that are going to give us more of a long range lighting. And we're hoping to get maybe in the 200 foot range. We actually reached out to our audience and said, hey guys, do you have an LED light that you really like? If so, what is it? And we got a wide range of answers. So I thought, you know, it seems like there's so many offerings on the market. It's a great chance to do some testing. So we decided to grab a really affordable light down in the $25 range. And then we also bought probably one of the most expensive 20 inch light bars I've ever seen. I tried to reasonably buy light bars that are about the same. They've got the same lens pattern, roughly the same lumens output and roughly the same wattage. I did some research this morning just to verify everything, and it turns out this light from Baja Designs, well, it's a lot more light than either of these two. Don't you wanna see what a thousand dollar LED light bar does? So each of these light bars is a 20 inch model. First impressions, it's curved, that's probably gonna give us a wider light pattern, I would imagine. The light pattern that I went after on each of these lights is a spot flood type combination. This $25 light comes with simply two wires. There's no uh, waterproof harness or anything attached to it. The cooling fins really mimic 
a lot of the lower end uh, light pod cooling fins. They're very thin. You can see this probably. I'm able to bend these with just my fingers. If you were going to be doing some trail running or something like that with this light and hitting branches and stuff like that, it's highly likely that you would end up bending and severely damaging these cooling fins. This light appears to have a seal on the side here that mates the housing to this kind of side piece. This light's probably gonna leak without some additional silicone or something to give it a good seal there. Where the cord enters the housing is also a known weakness for waterproofing. I would not trust this to be waterproof. It looks like there might be a little bit of adhesive or something there. For mounting locations, there's a mount on either side, which gives the light a good uh, mounting rotation. And it looks like it's kind of notched. So that should really provide a pretty secure mount. The finish is acceptable. It appears to be a cast aluminum. It does appear to just have a black paint. I can't tell if it's anodized. It doesn't appear to be paint because there's not a lot of thickness to it. And it doesn't easily scratch. It looks like Alyssa's gloves froze. I'm so cold. Sorry, love. It's really chilly it must out here. It's gotten wet or something. This one's lumber. Oh boy. All right. Maybe I'll wear your gloves. We'll get this figured out. I see a small screw kind of peeking out right here. Oh, I see here. So the front, there are screws going in here that kind of hold this side cover on to the face. And then this is mounted to there. So lots of screws going on here. This light has 40 LEDs on it in groups of four. The outer eight appear to have a different lens pattern. And I'm guessing that's where we're going to get that more diffused light. In the center, we're seeing more of a spot type lens. 40 LEDs, 120 watt light, that would put these at three watts a piece. This may be really nitpicking quality, but maybe we can try to do a fair comparison. It, it appears that the LEDs are not really centered inside the lens. They're, some of them are offset to one side or the other. And I, I can't help but think that that's going to create like a really interesting beam pattern. One of the things that really stood out to me as I researched lighting was not just wattage and not just uh, lens type, meaning spot, flood, etc., but really the ability to focus that light wherever you want it so that you don't have a lot of stray light. I'm kind of curious when we get to this testing phase, whether the equal wattage lights produce more usable light. Me not just paying for wattage and lumens, we're paying for how that light is placed, which comes down to lens design. It's kind of curious based on the price, whether this light would come with plastic mounting hardware. And it feels like, and sounds like, everything is actually metal. So that, when I was looking at the photos, I expected this to be uh, plastic and it's definitely metallic and it appears to be aluminum, cast aluminum, which makes it fairly light. I'm kind of impressed there. And even on this budget light, it looks like this is stainless steel hardware. So as far as weather resistance, the mounting, which uh, again, I think the anodizing, well, there we go. I think we finally found out this is paint. If you look really closely in there, I think that you can see the paint spatter. Um, that's not something that I'm, I'm familiar with. I don't believe that you would see this type of, of pattern on an anodized product just because of how anodizing happens. Casting quality of this hole here, the mounting hole, it looks like that's going to need to be cleaned up you know, before you're even going to get a screw to go through there. Of course, on a budget light, most of us would say these things are perfectly acceptable problems. Of course, with a metal only mount like this, you wouldn't want to put this on body work or anything that would be easily damaged. So they include a small, uh, it's, it's molded rubber. This is a, a pretty hard rubber. It's not plastic. It's, it's definitely pliable and it appears to key into the base on this mount and these small nubs of course would create you know some amount of friction there from the looks of things every piece of hardware included with this light 
is stainless steel. Pretty costly in comparison with things like zinc or galvanized. Even on a budget light, they're giving you such high quality hardware. Two mounts don't really fit together super good. Of course, if you screwed them down really tight, I think it would probably lock in better. The rosette is definitely a cast rosette, so it doesn't key in really well. They do include a harness, a full relay included, rated at 40 amps, which is more than enough for this light. The two ring terminals, these are looking kind of small, I'll just say that. But I would say for the current draw of this light, they should be adequate. It's kind of strange, but they include these quick connect terminals that do have a protective sheath, but the light doesn't have any terminals. So you'd have to do a little bit of work to get a crimp on these to connect those two. Thing we noticed on the budget pod light, and is true here also, this sheath is by no means weatherproof, so dirt and things could easily find its way in there. But they include a sheath, so any kind of chafing or rubbing on there is going to give your wires a bit of protection. So I would say for a budget light, that's a, that's a really nice feature. So they include a small switch and it's push button. It does have an on off light indicator and it looks like the mounting is a double stick foam adhesive. Also an inline fuse and that is not waterproof. This case has a very open hole. So this would need to be mounted in a very protected area ideally. And they're including a 30 amp fuse Relay appears to be a fairly standard 12 volt relay. So if you were to ever have problems with that, you'd probably pay more for that relay than we did for this entire light. 25 bucks to your door. Can see the seal for the front lens here inside. It's like a, a rubber kind of material, a rubber band almost. Have concerns about waterproofing. For a lot of us, if you're gonna put this on a front of a vehicle or something that's going to be subjected to rocks and road damage and things, it's, it's, it's definitely a concern. By just pushing on it, it appears to be thin. Now thin doesn't necessarily in and of itself mean it's not durable, but I would be concerned about breaking it. Moving up the value chain, this 20 inch LED bar is from Rigid Industries. The perception is definitely up there for price, but also quality. A lot of folks who use LED lighting for work, either search and rescue, uh, agriculture, things like that, had a lot of good things to say about Rigid. This thing is heavy felt like the rigid pod lights, and I'm gonna say the same thing about their light bar, is designed for durability, not for weight. It's a tank. Cooling fins are a similar design. They're definitely pronounced and large. I would definitely not be afraid to hit these with branches and other things. As far as the ceiling on the body, the overall design is similar to the $25 light, but the quality of the, the housing overall is, is higher. It looks like this is maybe extruded aluminum instead of being cast. But then when I look at the side components, they do appear to be cast. Can't see any seals or anything that are visible, so I have a hunch that what we may be seeing here maybe is more like an O-ring. It's true on the sides as well. Where the cable enters the body is a very nice connection and definitely looks both durable as well as well sealed. One thing that Rigid does include is a, is a vent on their lights to allow some of the atmospheric exchange pressure within the light. And so a lot of people are alarmed because they see what perceptibly is a hole in the side of the light and that's actually just a vent. This cord from the light all the way through this connector is a single piece. And for weather protection, they nailed it. And this is a Deutsch connector, an automotive grade 
waterproof, weatherproof connector. Something that I can say that Rigid does very well. I don't know why, but I have a real affinity for these types of connectors. They make a very positive connection and you just feel good leaving this type of thing out in the mud and going through the car wash, you know, in the weather. This light is also a 40 LED light. It's very clear that there's an additional lens over each LED. So on these flood lenses, there's a very tiny little piece of glass or something that a, it kind of looks like a contact lens almost. On these eight, it's very small. And out here in the middle, it's very large. So that's how they're generating a much more precise light pattern. Something I noticed on the cheaper light and I was curious to compare is the quality of the, not only the LED, but the lenses. We talked a lot about usable light versus just wattage and lumens. And looking really closely, the quality and precision is much higher. Each LED looks like it's very centered within the lens. So it stands to reason this light should produce a much more predictable light pattern. These are also three watt LEDs. If you were just to look at the two lights based on the number of LEDs and the wattage, you might come to the conclusion that they're fundamentally equal lights. I have a hunch when we get down to testing, we're gonna see a massive difference in how that light is focused between these two. Rigid E-Series is rated at 9,200 lumens. As far as durability on the lens, it's a polycarbonate lens. I'd say it's durable. I, it hurts even pounding on it. I don't know if it's just thicker or even made from a different material, but there's definitely a pronounced resilience there over the budget light. Rigid's mounting solution definitely is quite different than the more budget light. They include this small composite piece. It's some sort of uh, injection molded plastic that appears to insert into the side of the light and it provides basically a friction mount to this included steel mounting plate. It has three positions included on it. It appears to be a piece of just stamped metal that's been bent and mm, I'm gonna go with painted on this one. This is steel, very, very heavy just kind of goes with all of the things that Rigid seems to do with durability. Our lights just went out. Time to go gas up the generator. Cameraman says keep going, so we'll keep going. And I'm gonna go with these are also stainless steel. All of their washers and they include lock nuts. One small difference, and uh, I don't know, maybe you guys feel different about this, but these are regular hex bolts. So you'd have to have a wrench or a set of wrenches to tighten them where on the budget light, they included an Allen bolt. And I feel like in my world, having a set of Allen keys handy in, is more portable than a set of wrenches. So they've got a bit of a clever mount here. The bolt actually slides in behind the mount and is then affixed to the light and sliding this composite washer, if you will, over that bolt, and then attaching the mount, and then finally a washer and a lock nut. The good news is once that bolt is inside, you don't need a wrench to hold it anymore, somewhat like the concept behind a carriage bolt. So now you can tighten or adjust the light with just the single locking or uh, locking nut there. Rigid thought through just a little bit better maybe than some of the other companies. When they provide this mounting location for the attachment to whatever you're gonna put this light on, it's not just a round hole. They really given you an additional benefit here, benefit here that's not super obvious. But because this has square sides, you could use a carriage bolt for mounting. And for some things, a carriage bolt is perfect because you only have access to the nut. Or even for security purposes, 
it can make, you know, like an anti-theft type thing. So they've allowed you to use a carriage bolt here, whereas on some of the mounts we've seen, there's simply a round hole and of course a carriage bolt at that point is of no benefit. We did a video on this fuel pump and I think it's made Alyssa and I just that much more lazy <laughs> because we don't have to lift the gas cans anymore. Let's take a closer look at the harness. They include a nice weather sealed uh, toggle switch. The light is built into the switch. They've included a nice shielded uh, harness. So you're gonna be protected from chafing and rubbing. The ring terminals, you know, they're not any, any bigger than the other light. They look to my eye to be maybe number 12 or maybe even number 14. Wow, this is 16. I guess I need to brush up on my wire current ratings. The rigid harness has three wire leads here. They have a small rubber boot on them. Um, they're of course not weather sealed, so that would need to be in a protected area. The Deutsch connector is probably, to me, the most exciting part about rigid's products. This small rubber gasket here provides a very positive seal. Surety of the connection too is just really, really nice when you're putting connectors and things in hard to reach locations, but also in situations where weatherproofing is so important. And we get a really nice firm connection. The fuse holder on the Rigid is waterproof. I remember this from their pod lights. This thing was insanely difficult to remove. And of course, another blade fuse. This one is only a 15 amp. Their relay, I can say that the heat shrinking on this relay is a little bit more durable. It feels like a little more of a solid connection. These can really take a beating from vibration. So it's nice to see that also for weather protection. And their relay mount is just bulletproof. It's a little bit heavier gauge than on the budget light. One thing I noticed on the rigid uh, pod lights was the fact that adding them to an existing lighting system, kind of difficult because they include a beautiful Deutsch connector and then you've got this gorgeous harness. But if you're adding it to an existing lighting system, it would be a tragedy to butcher this. Something I'm gonna try to do, I'm not sure if I'll be able to do it, is buy aftermarket Deutsch connectors so that I can add it to our existing system without having to modify this harness. This light, $399, a little over 10 times. What would that be? 14 times more than the budget light. The one you've been waiting for. This is the Baja Designs Onyx 6 high power 20 inch light. Here's hoping it lives up to the price. Ugh. This is a serious light. Holy moly. I think it's pretty safe to say my reaction taking this out of the box is wow. And maybe it's the design, but it's incredible. It just, the, the 10 LEDs really, excuse me, 12 LEDs are just like, what? When you take it out of the box, it doesn't look anything like the other lights. Looking at the cooling of this light, man, just in line with the S2 Pro lights pods that we unboxed. These cooling fins, they're not going anywhere. Very sturdy design. Because the heritage of Baja Designs is racing, this light is built to be bulletproof. Giving this a careful look for waterproofing, I can't even see any ceiling. And I think from some of my research, I recall that Baja Designs does in fact use an O-ring type seal. So these are, this appears to be a machined aluminum piece. 
versus the extruded and cast aluminum on both the rigid and the budget light. The hardware is all stainless steel, but this piece looks very strong, but also the water tight connection appears to be very good. This is one of those areas that sets Baja designs apart. These optics or the lens is replaceable by you. They've got an O-ring seal behind here, so they feel confident that the end user can remove this lens, put on a different lens with a different light pattern, and put it all back together and maintain the waterproof seal. This faceplate is also machined aluminum. Exquisite detail, first of all. The quality of the machining is just incredible. Where the cord enters the housing, very nice molded rubber connection here with a very positive screw connection. So not just relying on a press fit grommet or something along those lines. So they've got some sort of kind of shield piece here called moisture block on the cord. And I'm not certain what is exactly is happening there. I'm guessing these holes represent venting or ventilation. That's just a guess. I probably shouldn't speak to that because I don't fully understand what we're looking at there. One thing I did notice on the pod lights and again on this light bar, is that Baja Designs does not, for whatever reason, weather seal this sleeve. So this connector to sleeve is, is open and debris could easily get inside there. I feel like if there's one thing that Baja Designs could do better is create a more positive connection here. Of course, this is a sealed connector, so one wouldn't worry about it. Just the quality of the rigid light here really is, is really up there. And I think Baja could do something even better. Probably the most obvious design change here is going from a 40 LED design down to just 12. One of the things that stands out to me about Baja designs is how they have built this sort of incremental uh, design. So this 20 inch light is actually just two of their six LED lights combined into a single body. They're driving these LEDs, which I believe are around a 20 watt LED at 100%. The lens design overall really stands out. Just one of these LEDs on the side is the flood pattern. The four in the middle are spot. But because you're using two six LED bars combined into one, you actually have a center couple that are providing a flood pattern also. I've kind of wondered if that might not give you a little bit more balanced light overall. The thing I can notice right away is that the two center LEDs seem to be much smaller than the two ancillary LEDs. If you look closely at the emitter, the center two are smaller and the outer two are larger. On the diffuser lens, you can't really see the LED too well, but it's clear that there's a lot going on here, showing the forward thinking and more speaking to the application that Baja Designs builds around is the replaceable lens. We talked a little bit about lens durability on the other lights. Baja is, n is no exception. It's a very strong lens, but unlike the other two lights, I don't know that you would feel confident taking those lenses off and replacing them. But if you damaged by rock or some other way, one of these lenses on the Onyx 6, Baja Designs no doubt would be able to send a brand new lens and you'd be back in business in no time. No surprise here, we're looking at all stainless steel hardware. One difference for sure in the Baja design is the mounting design. I can't tell, I wish I had a better eye. This sure does look like it's galvanized, but there's also a part of me that's thinking it may actually just be a piece of stamped stainless steel. 
you would think at the price point they would be looking at that level of quality. Baja feels confident that you need a two position mount to get the adjustability and strength. The initial stud here would be inserted in and that's what actually suspends the light. And then a second piece of hardware is used to actually adjust this mount one more time really just speaks to how Baja Designs thinks about their products. They have their roots in racing. You'll see these hollowed out type uh, features in their product because in racing, weight is everything. Whereas again, it seems like on the rigid, strength is a greater priority. So where they could reduce weight slightly here, Baja Designs has taken that and made it a reality. Something I noticed when I went to mount the LED light pods, and I see it again on these light bars, is that uh, Baja does not include a carriage bolt as part of their mounting hardware. I, I don't fully understand that because sometimes in mounting locations, having the ability to only access the nut is, is really helpful, but their included hardware is not able to take advantage of that. However, on their mount, they've left that door open. For the connection, Baja provides an automotive quality, waterproof three pin connector. Provide the other connector. There's no switch, no relay, no fuses, no harness. The assumption is you're adding this to something with an existing wiring system, or you're capable of adding your own wiring. If we're honest, we'd admit that there's really no perfect harness. It's kind of like a stab in the dark about what application, how much wire, etc. Be thinking what I was thinking, if it's a regular LED light, what's with the third pin? This is a feature on the Baja light that allows you to use what's called a momentary contact switch. If you're familiar with Baja racing or off-road racing, oftentimes they will blink their lights or flash their lights at someone as a way of either letting them know they're coming up behind them or, hey, I want to go around. So this light with the third green wire allows you to access some of those features such as a dimming feature, which will dim the light to 50% power or a strobe feature by holding the switch for two seconds. It does say in the instructions, if you just want to use it like an LED light, you can use black and white and an on off switch and you'll get a perfectly good LED light. They do mention instructions shed a little bit of light on the moisture block on the cord. And I wanted to share this because I think it's important. We talked about how the connector isn't particularly sealed against moisture or debris intrusion. That's where moisture block comes in. They even say in the instructions that you can cut this connector off and you will not void the warranty for the light. Onyx 6 light is available in two different outputs from Baja. This is the high power version and is rated at 23,300 lumens. They offer a non high power version. It's the same light, but is rated at a slightly different output. And the current rating on this light is 200 watts. That's it. Thousand dollar 20 inch LED light bar. We really enjoyed unboxing these lights and feel like we've learned a lot about the quality differences that exist at these different price points. We did want to share more about the mounting and initial testing in this video, but it's pretty long already and we want to make sure that the mounting gets a fair shot. So we're going to save that for the next video. And then in a future video, we're actually going to do more comparison testing. Uh, we did have one small issue with the Baja Designs light, ironically and we did get that fixed and it's working good. And so hopefully uh, in a couple of videos soon, we'll be able to share our results with side-by-side -side comparison testing. Now what?
mounting. We just finished unboxing the cheapest and the most expensive 20 inch LED lights. We're currently working on upgrading the lighting on our backhoe. We've already done some pod lights and now we're excited to be installing a light bar for some long range light. I was super excited to find in my research for mounting LED lights a no weld, no cut, no drill mount. We use those with our LED pod lights and they are fantastic, but they're not the biggest magnet. And given the weight of these light bars, I would be concerned about using just those smaller uh, mounts, but I found something better. Uh oh. Holy cow, I'll smash your finger. Wow. This mount is a two magnet mount. And according to the manufacturer, it's rated for emergency braking at 60 miles per hour or 100 kilometers per hour. So I don't know if that if I would use this on a high speed vehicle or not, but if you're doing rock crawling or anything low speed like our backhoe, this could be the perfect mount without having to modify anything. They include with each magnet set two mounts and four magnets. These have a rubber coating over them or a rubber jacket, which would be nice to keep abrasion down on painted or finished surfaces. And the magnet inside is definitely strong. Wow. Holy cow. Can't get it off there now. Wow. <laughs> From one to the other. Ah. Yay, okay, she started. It's not too cold. That could have easily been a one hour ordeal. But it wasn't. But it wasn't. See a problem already with the Baja Designs mount uh, compatibility here. Since it's a two connection design, this factory is not going to do the job. So we may have to modify this magnetic mount in order to securely install this light. This one mount's probably not going to cut it. The rigid and budget light both should easily mount to this one design. Also see a compatibility problem with the budget light since it is designed with a rosette style mount. There's no rosette on the magnetic mount. So you'd have to rely on tension alone to keep the light adjusted. So for this type of mount, the friction mount on the rigid really is the most compatible out of the box. So I have a cheap and an expensive light. Yeah, I think I'll test the cheap light. Said no one ever. Based on initial impressions, I stand corrected. Uh, it seems like the tension on these two mounting studs for this testing anyway is plenty. Of course, I don't think I'd really go Baja racing without a little bit better connection. One of the reasons that we tested the S2 Pro lights by Baja Designs over the other lights for a mounting purpose was we could install them on our existing uh, connection. So that's a consideration with mounting is how, how are you going to be connecting the light to whatever it is that you do? and does the mount make sense? So just because this mounting system is no cut, no drill, no weld, doesn't mean you're not gonna have to do some of those things to route wires and cables. Let's get these crusty things out of here. Ugh. Hey grandpa, come get your lights, would ya? Because we plan on doing some testing down the road, we've actually been installing these quick connect connectors on these lights. It makes it really easy to mount or dismount a light without having to go through a lot of trouble with wiring.
So that was pretty easy to put together. Pretty soon we're gonna have our own sledding hill. Yeah. This is gonna be big. We should put all this in one spot and then we'll have a sledding party and have yeah. marshmallows and hot dogs and hot cocoa. you wouldn't mount something outside the rollover protection and I think long term we probably won't do that either. We're going to remove these two center lights and we'll probably end up mounting whatever bar we decide to stick with in between these two smaller pod lights. If you haven't already seen the unboxing video we did on these lights, they are fantastic. We've been doing a lot of work on the backhoe at night and the ability to get some light portably out where you need it and focused has been invaluable to getting work done. see already that my strategy of mounting this on the front is doable but I'm gonna have to find a different spot to mount these floods but with the magnetic mount I could even put them down here on the lower part of this rollover protection why couldn't we take these mounts and turn them around and mount them underneath the light <sighs> Yeah, it's, it's probably it's, not going to go anywhere, but I wouldn't like mob down the freeway with it. Well, it's a little slick, so I think it's worth cleaning up right where the magnets are. We'll take the rest of that ice off of there. Looking good. That's pretty good there. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. Let me try that. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's way bigger. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Well, put it on there right the first time, that's for sure. Oh, wow. Oh. Time to test her out. Yeah. Trying to get it straight. Straight matters as much as anything at that distance. You probably send signals to like airplanes with this one, but we probably ought to just aim it down for driving. Only one's on, only one side's coming up. Oh, when you say one side, what does that mean? Only the left, your right six are coming on. Really? Yep. Uh oh. Do it again. Yep. Huh. So that works, yep. right? It's not nearly as exciting if there's no lights. Yeah. It's a crappy mounting video if there's no lights at the end. Right? Like That's what they really want to see, let's be honest. Well, we better give them some plowing footage to appease them, otherwise they might riot. Huh. There's nothing you can do about that either that I know of, unless no, it doesn't make any sense. We're not going to deal with that right now. We've need to do a little bit more research and maybe even try to contact Baja Designs. That's This video is not about the Baja light. It just sucks because we thought for a thousand bucks that thing would light up like a Christmas tree. But for now, I really just want to get some plowing done. So this is our S2 Pro floodlights that we have mounted on single magnets and they really light up in front of the backhoe super good. And here's the light bar 
that's going to instead give us more of a long range light. Uh, let's see if it needs to be adjusted at all. There we go. So that's our light bar we just mounted on top. There's our floodlights in the front and here's the two of them combined. Holy mackerel, that's a lot of light. feels really good to have mounting out of the way. When I first started researching LED lights, I was a little intimidated by mounting. I couldn't really find anything that took advantage of the factory mounting on the backhoe, and that made me realize maybe putting LEDs on the backhoe wasn't going to be so easy after all. And I was really excited to find a kind of non-permanent solution. I'm just not the kind of person who jumps straight to cutting and welding. I'd rather test it out a little bit and see if it's something that I like. So I figured doing a few videos on these might help some people out there who have a similar situation. Maybe they don't have a vehicle or an application where there's a factory or aftermarket mount for LED lights. Another thing that I didn't really realize when I started down the LED light path was uh, how time consuming it would be. I originally thought we'd buy a few lights, install them, shoot a couple videos, and we'd be done with it. And I really wanted to put a lot of effort into these videos, not just the video quality, but the information. I really enjoy people who take the time to share some of the more intimate details or intricate details that help me to make a more informed buying decision. We did get the issue with the Baja light resolved, and now we can move on to to testing. <laughs> 